The Hatter Cardiovascular Institute was established at University College London in 1990. We moved uh, recently to a new building. University College London uh, has what is called a biomedical research center, which is uh, created by via the government's Department of Health to undertake experimental research. In the last comprehensive assessment of quality of research undertaken in Britain, UCL was number one for research power and number one for research impact. That means we're taking the research into patients and other areas of research at UCL and making a difference. So the Hatter, in many ways, is, is part of that constellation of excellence that we see across UCL. Our interests are very much ischemic heart disease uh, and trying to protect the heart in those patients that have an acute myocardial infarction. So the research that we undertake is very fundamental as well as very clinical. The fundamental approach is to look at the cellular mechanisms of what is happening when one has a heart attack and we then translate that into clinical research uh, in patients. One of the uh, really exciting things that we're doing at the moment is a phenomenon called remote conditioning. It has been shown that if you put a blood pressure cuff on a muscle such as the arm and you inflate the blood pressure cuff and you deflate it, you do that a few times, that will send a signal through the blood and possibly through the neuronal connections to various organs in the body. So therefore if you have then a subsequent injury to that organ, that organ is kept in a conditioned state for a few hours and can protect against that injury. Although there are a number of laboratories around the world investigating this phenomenon, we are one of the first to be undertaking a large multi-centre study supported by the British Heart Foundation and we're combining this with a study that's being undertaken in Denmark in a number of centres there. So we should have approximately over 4,000 patients study investigating this phenomenon. If it's proven to be effective, then it could be used routinely uh, throughout the world. We're also trying to understand if we can develop the right drugs that we can mimic what is happening when you condition a patient. We have a range of models and methods. We start with a single cell and we're looking at how that cell dies and how we can protect it from dying. We have a range of animal models uh, where we can remove the heart from a mouse or a rat and subject it to hypoxia or ischemia reperfusion using an isolated apparatus. We perform remote conditioning to healthy human volunteers and immediately after remote conditioning sample their blood and dialyse the plasma across a small membrane so that you get a small portion of, of the plasma proteins diffusing into some buffer and we can then perfuse that buffer through an isolated rat heart prior to giving it inj an injury the idea being that there's a protein released in response to remote conditioning that can protect the isolated heart from injury. We have a very good relationship with our cardiothoracic surgeons. So when a surgeon does open heart surgery or coronary artery bypass surgery, he has to put a line into the right atrium to connect it to the bypass machine. But to do that, he has to cut off a piece of muscle. We have ethical committee approval to take that muscle back to the laboratory and put it in an organ bath and we can simulate a heart attack on that muscle. When we obtain the piece of heart muscle, we, under the microscope, cut off the thick muscle fibres, we tie a suture around each end and then we can hang it between two pins. One is connected to a force transducer that monitors the strength of the contraction and we can pace the heart muscle as if it was beating inside the body. We, the, the solutions can then be changed to mimic different physiological circumstances such as in a heart attack or again in normal physiology. We've become ex very interested recently in something called nanoparticles or exosomes. Very simply these nanoparticles or exosomes are tiny, tiny fragments, smaller than the size of a virus, which used to be considered as the debris of the cell. 
we were fascinated by the fact that there are, there are billions of particles in our blood and no one really knows a lot about what they're doing. And uh, we isolated them from the blood of, of people and uh, investigated them and found that they, indeed they are protective. And uh, now we're interested in looking at the, the mechanism of how they do protect the heart. The aim is eventually one day we'll be able to prepare these exosomes and give them to patients who are having a heart attack to stimulate the heart to be protected. We are very privileged in the work that we do. Uh, I personally am very fortunate to be surrounded by exceptionally bright and enthusiastic basic and clinical scientists. Uh, we're all always meeting and discovering new ways to take our research forward. And I'm hoping very much that uh, over the next 10 years, we'll be able to make some major breakthroughs in the way we treat patients suffering from an acute myocardial infarction.